Hello and welcome to Anton Math. Today we're going to be starting Part 5, Unit 2 of our Precalculus series. Uh, today's section we're going to be starting talking about trigonometric functions of real numbers. Now I've, I've typed up a little definition for us. And if you didn't watch uh, 5.1, uh, Unit 5.1, or you're not familiar um, with terminal points, uh, with real numbers on the unit circle, etc. I do recommend that you go back and review that because it's going to uh, be necessary here in these definitions of these trigonometric functions. Now I've typed it up for us and I'll go ahead and read it out here. Let PXY be the terminal point on the unit circle determined by the real number T. So just a quick review uh, if, if it's been a little bit since you watched the last video. If we have uh, a value t, for example, t is pi over 4. Remember that value t was associated with a terminal point. Now positive direction means that we move counterclockwise from this point here, this is our standard initial position, and pi over 4 moves us around the circle this distance right here. Pi over 4 is 1 8 of our total distance around the circle 2 pi. So this would be my terminal point p, and it has an x coordinate of root 2 over 2 y coordinate of root 2 over 2. So that's just a quick reminder of, of what I mean when I say uh, let p of x, y be the terminal point, and in this case x and y would be these two coordinates of that point determined by the real number t. So let's get back into our definition here of these trigonometric functions. Oops. Now I'm going to go ahead and define each of these. There are six different trigonometric functions that we're going to be using in this section. Some of them you're probably already familiar with, and some of them will probably be a little bit of a refresher. Now we have, first of all, we have sine t. Now I'm going to define sine of t is going to be defined as y. What that means is that sine of a real number t is equal to the y point in my terminal point, or so the y coordinate of my terminal point determined by that real number t. Now similarly, we have cosine, cosine of t. is going to be defined as the x-coordinate of that terminal point. And tangent of t is defined as the ratio between y and x, or in other words, y over x. Now it's very important here, and we'll go over this in more detail in the next video, that x is not equal to 0. Right? We know that we can't divide by 0. Dividing by 0 is not defined. And um, so there is going to be a restriction on tangent and any of these other ratio functions. Now the other three um, trigonometric functions that you may or may not be as familiar with as these three. Uh, the first one is called cosecant, and we denote that CSC, cosecant of t. And this is going to be equal to 1 over y. So again, because it's 1 over y, I need to make sure that my y does not equal 0, right? I can't divide 1 by 0. And think about that for a second. Ask yourself that question, how many times does 0 go into 1? And you'll convince yourself pretty quickly that that's not an actual number, is it? Now, the next one is called secant of t. This is defined as 1 over x. Again here, we need to make sure that x is not equal to 0. And then finally we have cotangent of t. Now cotangent of t is like tangent, and this gets, it looks a little bit, remember if we ever want to make sure we're not getting confused here, t is my argument, this t is part of the function cotangent. This is similar to tangent, but it's going to be x over y instead of y over x. So again, here I must have y not equal to 0. Now a couple of little observations first. And again, um, I just want to make sure it's clear that all of these x's and y's, these are coming from my terminal point p that we talked about finding in the last section, uh, based on this t, which is the argument of these functions. Okay. Now something I just want to note, if sine of t is y and cosecant of t is 1 over y, Note that I could also write cosecant 
of t is equal to 1 over sine of t, can't I? I know that sine of t and y are the same thing. So this is the same thing here. And that's the, um, that rule also applies to cosine and secant, tangent and cotangent. These functions are reciprocals of each other, right? If I divide 1 by sine, I get cosecant. And if I divide 1 by cosecant, likewise, I get sine again, don't I? 1 divided by cosecant, which is 1 over y. Remember, when we divide by a fraction, I can write this top as 1 over 1. If I'm dividing by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction, which is y over 1. So I just get y in the end. So I have both 1 over sine is cosecant, and 1 over cosecant is sine. Okay, so that covers it for just the definitions of these functions. And I just want to do a quick example while I have these definitions up before we take these down. And I've typed up this example here as well. So let's take a look. Example, and this is a, a common type of the question that you would see in any pre-calculus course. Find the values of all six trigonometric functions for t equals pi over 6. Now the first thing we need to know is what is p of xy determined by that t, right? I need to know what p of xy is determined by that number t. Now we had a chart last time, and if you remember, when t equals pi over 6, this gives me a p where my x value is the square root of 3 over 2, and my y value is 1 half. Okay, this is the terminal point p associated with this real number t. So now we can use this to find our six trigonometric functions just based on these um, definitions that we have up here. So sine of t, or in other words, in this case, I can be a little more specific, sine of pi over 6 is equal to the y-coordinate of my terminal point, or in other words, is equal to 1 half. Cosine of pi over 6 is equal to the x-coordinate of my terminal point, or in other words, is equal to the square root of 3 over 2. Now tangent of pi over 6, a little bit more algebra here, right? Tangent of pi over 6, this is going to be equal to y over x. Now again, the first thing we check is we want to make sure that x is not equal to 0, and we know it's not here, so we're okay. The tangent of pi over 6 is y over x, so in other words, it's 1 half divided by the square root of 3 over 2. Isn't it? That looks like a lot of division. I'm going to write this in a little bit different way. Actually, you know what? The first time I do this, I'll, I'll do, the, I'll do a, a new wave with cotangent. The first time we'll use that reciprocal method again, right? When we're dividing a fraction by a fraction, we can, uh, that's equivalent to taking the first fraction and multiplying it by the reciprocal or, um, you know, flipping this fraction upside down of the second fraction, right? So that's going to be 1 half times 2 over the square root of 3. This is the reciprocal of square root of 3 over 2. Now here I have a cancellation in the 2's. So this is going to be equal to 1 over the square root of 3, or in other words, uh, rationalizing that denominator, square root of 3 over 3. Okay, now we have three of them. Um, I'm going to go ahead and move this p out of the way and put that somewhere else. Right? My, just for reference here, my p was square root of 3 over 2, 1 half. Now once I have these three, it's actually quite easy to find the other ones, right? And that's because, remember what I said up here, um, if I have sine already, that's y, well cosecant is just 1 over that. And if we have 1 over a fraction, that's the same thing as taking the reciprocal of that fraction, as we saw when we took 1 over 1 over y to get y back. So once I find these three, I'm pretty much done. If sine equals 1 half, that means that cosecant of pi over 6 is going to be this fraction flipped, or in other words, 2 over 1, or just 2. Cosine is th root 3 over 2, so that means that secant is going to be the reciprocal of this. So secant of pi over 6 is going to be equal to 2 over root 3, and we want to rationalize this denominator, so that's going to be the same thing as 2 root 3 
over 3, isn't it? No reduction there. And then I have finally cotangent of pi over 6 is going to be the reciprocal of tangent. So tangent, um, it's a little bit easier to see right here, isn't it? I can actually um, take the reciprocal right here, root 3 over 3, but then I'm going to need to rationalize the denominator because I'll have that root 3 on the bottom. But if I just look right here, if I take the reciprocal of 1 over root 3, I just get root 3 over 1, or in other words, root 3. And then it's already in its reduced form, right? So just to, to write out what I just said, if any of you missed that, if I took the reciprocal of root 3 over 3, and then I rationalized the denominator, I'd have 3 root 3 over 3, and I get a cancellation of the 3s. So that's just equal to the root 3, isn't it? Okay, now we're done with this video, but I just want to, I, I mentioned something quickly, and I want to come back to it. Back to, let's say I was solving out for this tangent again, and um, just something that's going to come in handy when we're doing tangent and cotangent in any of these ratios of fractions. If I have the same denominator in each fraction, it's okay for me to just cancel that denominator. Okay, let me illustrate that out a couple different ways. If I have the same denominator, I can just cancel this denominator and I get 1 over the square root of 3. And that's what we had before, isn't it? But I want to go into a little bit of detail why. I don't want you to just take my word for it, right? That's not why we learned this stuff. Um, I know that the square root of 3 over 2, let's see, I have 1 half on the top. Don't jump ahead of myself. I know that the square root of 3 over 2, that's the same thing as the square root of 3 times 1 half, isn't it? So I'm just factoring out this denominator, basically. I'm factoring out this 1 half, and now it's easy to see that I can cancel the 1 half on the top with the 1 half on the bottom, the same way that I would cancel a 3 on the top and a 3 on the bottom over here. So again, I get 1 over square root of 3. Okay, so just a little trick to keep in mind, we can cancel numerators the same way of these ratios of fractions as well, for the same reason. We can factor out that numerator and cancel them on their own and then deal with the denominators afterwards. All right, I hope this was a helpful video. In the next video, we're going to be talking about the domain restrictions on these different functions and what exactly that means.